Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. This is our Horizon Reports discussion for Unit 5. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump into it. The first uh, ISTE standard that we have is engaging in professional growth and leadership for teachers. Uh, that's what we'll be talking about, essentially, professional growth and leadership. And I'll start off with the uh, report that I'm doing, which is the 2017 Key Trends uh, in, in K-12. Um, that was a, a summary report because they haven't released uh, the detailed report yet. What I can say about you know professional growth and leadership, they had um, a lot of the topics that we talked about about three uh, sessions back, uh, talking about advancing cultures of innovation and, and doing deeper learning approaches, um, doing a uh, focus on measured learning and redesigning learning spaces, all the stuff we covered before. But I think from a, a professional growth and leadership standpoint, um, they do call these things out in the summary. For example, for measuring learning, it says schools must rethink how to define, measure, and demonstrate subject master, mastery and soft skills such as creativity and collaboration. And I think that, you know, uh, teachers have a definite role in that and teachers have a definite role in things like adapting, redesigning learning spaces. So I think it's there, but it's, it's just not mentioned as explicitly in some of the other reports. Yeah, definitely. The K-12 2016 edition kind of hits on the same thing about rethinking how schools work. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was kind of interesting. There's one particular part where it talks about how LinkedIn did a report um, that on average people change jobs four times before turning 32 years old. Yeah. And to me, it was like, well, if that's true and that we are based around, it says that uh, students right now are characterized as entrepreneurial global thinkers who are highly social, visual, and technological. Well, if that's true and they're going to change jobs, then we can't go to the old school approach where we do pen and paper and we kind of, you know, do things that are not based around technology, as well as the fact that, like, we can't do um, training for the workforce as a whole. It needs to be more guided towards something because, obviously, they're going to change their minds over and over again, which is why, you know, in college they have that undecided option or undeclared because it is possible that people are going to change their minds quite often. Yeah, the uh, I read the uh, 2016 Museum uh, Horizon Report. Mm. and talked a lot about um, the issues museums are having trying to – incorporate technology and bring more people into the museums and they said one of their biggest things is their lack of uh, technology within the museums is a like learning approach they talked about developing more like self-sufficient uh, almost like I think kiosk style where like you're able to go up and like read about stuff without needing some kind of tour guide and things like that but uh, you know their biggest problem is a funding issue and teaching their employees too how to go about addressing um, the uh, attractions at the museum uh, in a way that will be engaging for the uh, students that come and visit the museum. Uh, their biggest issue is teaching their own staff how to properly, you know, meet the youth. Uh, that made me think of something that was talked about in the K-12 uh, Horizon Report, the 2017. And one of the things with buy-in, and what do you do when they're, excuse me, when there's change management? So if the person in charge of that library um, has a real heavy technology background and is pushing those practices and initiatives, what happens if they get promoted and leave? How do you sustain that buy-in from your from your staff? Whether yeah. it's education based or um, corporate. Um, so the next standard is professional development and program evaluation. So in the, the 2016 museum report, one of the things we talked about was developing, you know, technology for the museum for the, you know, to attract the right kind of people that are coming in. And it talked about two different things that are really, you know, keyed in on was one, they're focusing on the quality of the technology that they're trying to implement instead of quantity, which is kind of a problem that I think, you know, there is an, in, in education that a lot of people are developing all kinds of different things, but it's either not thought out on how to properly use it in schools or um, it's not being utilized in a way that is good for everyday learning. Yeah, that's kind of what we were talking about last time with uh, the fact that they have so many things that are on apps now because it is something that they can have access to. Um, and kind of feeding off of what you said at the beginning about using the devices correctly or using the programs correctly, one of the things it talks about in the 2016 K-12 um, Horizon Report is the fact that 
a lot of times we're using technology for remediation and we're not really using it a lot to advance the learning. It's like, oh, you don't know how to do that? Let's go to this so it can break it down, which is a good tool so that, you know, the kids who aren't getting it can see it in a different way. But we also need to make sure that we're using technology in a way that stretches our learners, especially, you know, our kids that are more advanced so that they are not, you know, kind of staying level where they could be advancing at a faster pace. You know, John, that was also brought up in my uh, article, the 2017 one, and it talked about um, how, to, how to fix that gap or how to address that gap. Um, and one thing it brought up, first of all, I brought up a new word I've never heard before, heuristic, which means teaching someone how to, how to learn for themselves and how to make do with what they have to get to the answer. And whenever we think of those kind of applications, that's what they're there for. They're there for remediation. And how can we implement technology to where it does help the learner get to the answer and solve their problem and learn about their own learning? Um, so that's a really interesting point that y'all both brought up about the achievement gaps in education and in technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, looking at, at the role of coaches, in, they don't mention coaches explicitly, but they do talk about technologists uh, as an example. And I think that could be somewhat similar of a role. Uh, and one of the areas that they were talking about technologists specifically is in coding, uh, bringing coding into the school environment and making it actually part of the curriculum. So our last standard for this week, it's for coaches also, and it says content knowledge and professional growth. Technology coaches demonstrate professional knowledge, skills, and dispositions in content pedagogic, pedagogical gogical, and technological areas as well as adult learning and leadership and are continuously deepening their knowledge and expertise. Um, one thing that this article talks about is how a team at Duke University is launching a professional development program that's going to provide elementary school teachers with training and consultation and collaboration. And going back to that, like my, the, the museum article talked a little bit about kind of the same kind of thing, figuring out, you know, a lot about figuring out your audience. And one of the things they realized too was uh, their struggles with people with disabilities in museums, mm -hmm. specifically like, you know, things that we may not always think about, people who are like colorblind or uh, have vision impairments, because light, because museums are, you know, if you've been one, you know, they have lots of areas where there's lots of low light, so it's difficult to see the things that they have on display or um, difficult to move around and trying to figure out, you know, technology, like changing technology as far as things like glasses for them to see, you know, when they're going around a museum. So, you know, as far as, as, far as this standard goes, uh, content knowledge and professional growth, there wasn't really a whole lot mentioned in this, in this set of uh, summaries from the, the 2017 K-12, but um, looking at the need to advance cultures of innovation, looking at the need for deeper learning approaches, especially the deeper learning approaches. They're talking about introducing problem-based learning, project-based learning, challenge-based learning, inquiry-based learning, and they're saying that the role of technologies in this type of learning, as it crystallizes, educators are going to leverage these tools uh, to connect the curriculum with real-life applications, and the only way to be able to do that effectively is going to be through coaches. Just from a personal experience, seeing um, project-based learning implemented on a campus, it's so important to have a coach that can help you um, just to understand what you're doing with it. Because, John, you're right. Sometimes as teachers, we get so caught up in, like, the excitement and razzle-dazzle of a new technology, a new style of learning, that it's, it's hard to know what you don't know yet. So it's nice to have a coach who kind of has worked through a lesson to see, like, hey, this might be a kink that you might encounter. Um, this might be a technology kink or just a pedagogical kink or even something with how the content plays along with the project-based learning. So it is really important to have a coach who's strong and willing to branch out and try it. Um, Don, I don't know about you, but I've noticed on campuses that sometimes we, we, um, we see teachers kind of get in a rut and then they, they get scared to branch out. So when they start seeing other teachers doing the project-based learning and the inquiry-based learning and the problem-based learning, um, it's, it's a lot easier for them to kind of smooth into that transition to, to try something different in their classroom, especially when they have the support of campus. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching our Horizon Report discussion. Again, I'm Brianne Wilson, Scott Tush, John Reese, and Don Wiedemann. See you next Bye. time.